Hello and welcome to Hard Questions, where we gather pastors together to take on your tough questions and answer them right from the Word of God. I'm Tom McGuff, the moderator for today, and our panelists on this program include... Dr. Weimar Glaze, Bethany Baptist Church in Pittsburgh. Chris Gibbs, pastor of Crossway Community Church in the Mars area. Pete Giacalone, Rainbow Temple Assembly God Church, McKeesport, Pennsylvania. J. Anthony Gilbert, Kingdom Restoration Christian Center, Mount Washington. Gentlemen, welcome, and, and welcome to you. Well, our, our first question, and, and this is a good question mm -hmm. because I, I think that this really applies to a lot of young families, and they want to know, the, the, the one wants to attend, one of the parents wants to attend one church, the other wants to attend another. What would you counsel well, them, advise well, them? Well, you know, Genesis uh, 2.24 says that uh, the man and wife should be of one flesh. Mm -hmm. And and to me that that's more than just you know union sexually, right. but that means you know one in purpose, you mm -hmm. know one mm -hmm. in life, and you know to going to church is such an important Amen. spiritual really matter is. that it seems to me that it's it's, it's kind of difficult to be that one flesh if you're going in two separate directions. So I think that, you know, to start off that, you know, that, that to me there's not, not an option going to two different churches. And, and it also mm. comes back to Dr. Glaze, uh, what, what is our com commitment to church nowadays? I've heard pastors say that if people attend their church once or twice a month, they consider that a full-time member. And, and the other part, and it's sad, and the other part to this is that, um, you see the idea of the body of Christ, you know, that we each have a, we each play a, a part in the body of Christ. So you come as a couple, you have a, a, a role in that church to be responsible to that church and, and so that your talents are being used in that church. So if he's going his way and she's going their way, they're not going to be used together as one. And like you said, the oneness is yeah, now divided. The other part of that too, not only are they not going to be used together as one, they're not going to be fed and strengthened together as one either. Right. Um, right. So they're not going to grow together right. as one. Right. But my question would be is, if this is the case, why is this the case? Why can you not go right. to the same church. Is there, I would look at the husband and say, okay, husband, you are to be the priest of your home, uh, but why is your wife not wanting to go to the same church? Why are you not wanting to go? What issue needs to be looked at? Is this a matter of con being contentious? Is this a matter of an undealt with issue? Is this a matter of something right. that you just blindly can't see? Is this, a, what, what is the reason? Because there cannot, if, there cannot be division, especially no, right. when we talk about church, our relationship with God. Do you have children? What are you teaching your children? What are you teaching other people about agreement? How are you living in uh, compliance or contradiction to the spirit of unity? How can you be one if you can't even go to church at the same time? Right. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, another thing I would say to give them some practical principles is that uh, the first thing I would say is that to apply the scriptural principles of he, uh, Ephesians chapter five. Yep. Right. Um, the Bible says a man ought to lay down his life for his mm -hmm. wife and the woman ought to submit. Whenever good, good, I'm good. in a conflict with my Very wife and good. I can't see eye to eye, I always go back to that. Have I laid down my life? Is there anything in me that's fighting against God's perfect will? Because God already has selected, I believe, a church for them. Right. So the reality is, is one of you needs to find out what it is that God is saying. So are you willing to lay down your life and is she willing to submit in that same scenario? The next thing I would say do, then I would attend the churches together. Right. I would attend the church he wants to go to, I would attend the church she wants to go to, and I'd come home and I'd begin to write up the pros and cons as to why that church might be a good fit for our family. Mm -hmm. In all of that before, in the middle and after, yeah, I would yeah. pray it up and pray it down middle of it all. And if I was a woman in that situation and my husband insists on going in that direction, I would submit to him because if it's not God and you submit, you give God authority now to work in his heart and show why he's missing it. And if you aren't, and if you are, and if you're not correct, you're already in alignment anyways. Right. So that is the practical steps that I would take in that scenario in order to move in anything, not just with church, but whenever you're not seeing eye to eye, apply those type of principles to help you make the right decision. And, and I think, sometimes we as pastors, we need to recognize this too. I remember one time uh, a man was coming to my church and his wife was going to another church and, and he left that church out of, he was upset with the pastor who I knew. And I told him one Sunday, I said, you know what, really, you don't belong here. Hmm. And, and he took offense to it. I said, I, I'd love to have you. He told me how much money he had and how much. I, I said, that doesn't concern me. Uh, it really doesn't. What concerns me is the unanimity that you have with your mm -hmm. wife. You need to go back to the other church and then you need to get things cleared up 
yeah. with your pastor because you're just bringing your troubles here and you're going to cause trouble here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. We were very yeah. happy to have him back too. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 you know, I, I think, and, and you know, to follow up on what Pete said, as I know I do a lot of premarital counseling. Yeah. And uh, I counsel single people from my church that are right. engaged to somebody from another church. And as difficult as it is for me, because I want to keep people sure, at my sure, church, sure. you know, I tell them, you, gotta release them you know, sometimes. I say that, you know, I don't know where you're going to go, but you need to go together. That's and right. if that means not coming here, then, you know, as, as much as I struggle with that, hey, I'm all right with it. Yeah. Okay. You know, I think it's, it's important, and this is a word of encouragement. If you're in this situation, I think a good word of encouragement, obviously, one of the goals that we have as parents is that, that our children, you know, grow up in the faith. And, and I, all of the statistics and everything yeah. that you ever read is that when mom and dad both have that influence and, and are, are leading children to church, there is unquestionably a statistical yeah. evidence that that will uh, root better in the children. So as a word of encouragement, it is important yeah. that, that we know, fellowship together. And, and Tom, I've seen it work the other way too, where people are testing out your church. And sometimes, the, uh, I remember years ago in my other church, we had two morning services. And, 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 and couples, sometimes one would come to the early morning service and then go to the other church with their mate. And then after a while, then they made up their decision, you know, what are they going to do? Okay, next question. Uh, this uh, woman uh, uh, wrote in this question. She said, I grew up in, uh, in a church where dancing and drinking was considered a sin. And from your perspective, is well, it? Well, I, I would ask the question, which one are we going to focus on first, <laughs> dancing or drinking? You know, Look, uh, if you've ever seen me dance, dance, you know it's a sin. I'm going to tell you, I got no the business dancing. Will lead you to dancing. I got no business dancing. The drinking will lead you to dancing. Well, well let, 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 me, let me just say this, uh, because I think that I, I, I'll address the dancing part. Okay. You know, no, I don't think that uh, dancing is a sin. You know, when you look at dancers like the Hokey Pokey and <laughs> Macarena, you know, I mean, you know, so uh, to me, what is a sin? is that when you do sexually suggestive things, I think then that's when the sinful part comes in. Or if you are immodestly dressed and you're out on the floor and your body parts are, right. you know, I think that that's where the sin comes in. And, and if the motions are sexually yeah. suggestive. But dancing in itself, you know, David danced before yeah. the Lord. Yeah. So, you know, I don't necessarily if think that dancing. If you need a dancing. chiropractor after you've been dancing, <laughs> no, that don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree with what Dr. Glaze is saying. I think that's important. Yeah. You know, some of the dances they do nowadays yeah. are uh, basically almost like sex standing up yeah. with right. your clothes on. I yeah. mean, and, and that type of thing there no. is not what you want to be doing. No. Um, I think even drinking as well. I don't think going to a club or something like that. People say, is that a sin? I, I don't see any place in the scripture where you say that's a complete sin, but what you do there. Right can become a sin. Uh, same thing with drinking. Um, I don't think that drinking is a sin, but drunkenness is. Um, and the reality is, is how, w what you do with it. I mean, they're very, very fine lines. There's a scripture that always comes to mind with stuff like this. The Bible says, work out your own salvation, but this is the end result, mm -hmm. with fear and trembling. That means don't play with that stuff though, mm -hmm. because you might find yourself in a predicament that you don't need to be in doing things you shouldn't be doing, going and seeing things you shouldn't see and do. Right. And so I think a lot of times we just have to really, it goes back to what yeah. we mentioned before about Christian conscience. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You have to determine exactly. what is correct for you. And I think a lot of times if we're legalistic about things like that, mm. we rob people exactly. of, watch it, of the opportunity for the Holy Spirit to do a sanctifying work mm -hmm. in their hearts. And yeah, we also got to look at, again, you go back to motivation. Why are you doing what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. And I think too, if you are married or you, you are in that kind of a relationship, I think you need to look too, is what you're doing, are you causing somebody else to sin? Okay. If you were like, for, for me, I, I agree with you on the drinking thing. Uh, I don't drink. Um, it, it, there, there's a few reasons for that. But one of the reasons, the most important is because my wife got saved out of that. And for me to be a part of that kind of a lifestyle, even casually, would be something that would bother her because it would link her back to something that was yeah, not sure, good. Sure, and so therefore, sure. would it be a sin for me? Yes, it would be a sin for me because of, 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 of that. That, that yeah, would be one yeah. thing. And it also gives me a better testimony with my kids. When my kids, is it a sin? Look, when you're 21, come ask me that question. Uh, but right now, it is a sin for you to drink. Uh, it is a sin for you to drink because your parents say no, the law says no, when you're 21, that's when you can, I mean, we'll talk about that beforehand, but that, that, is, that is what that is. It's the motivation right. of why we do what we do. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 20 through 22, they may use this 
test all things, hold fast what is good, abstain from the very appearance of evil. So I, I think it's a, and I don't, I don't use that scripture as a scripture to, um, uh, to be legalistic for myself. Uh, that was settled for me at 17 as far as drinking. When I gave my life to Christ, I, 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 was, I refused to return to that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's an old flame. It's an old love. I don't want to rekindle that. It's yeah. dead. It's gone. And it's gone mm -hmm. forever. Now, I do enjoy when Elaine and I go to a wedding, I enjoy dancing with my wife. Um, and I have no problems yeah. uh, of just Elaine and I together. I, I, to me, it's, it's something special for us. Well, to mention again, I remember when I was younger as a pastor, there's somebody that said, I want to go to a club. And I said, you can't go to a club. The devil is a liar. Stay away from that stuff, yeah. da, 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 because that was where I was. That was your club right. life. That was yeah. where I was at. Right. And, uh, and, and so I talked to my pastor. I said, let him go. I said, let him go. I said, you crazy? What? Like the Holy Spirit can't do his job. And he said, they went. And this one was amazing. They went. And when they came out of there, they never, ever went back again. That they happened, never went back again me. because they went there and that said, you know me. what? Yeah. This is I not for me. Yeah. And so right. we just yeah. tell people, don't know, don't go. And the Bible doesn't clearly say they can't. They need to go in there sometimes, not with sinful stuff, mm -hmm. stuff where there's gray areas. Yeah. Try it and see, is that what is wrong for me? And then the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit did a work in their hearts right. and they never, ever looked back at it again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are going to reload the chambers. Okay. And we're <laughs> going to be back with some more hard questions. So you're going to want to stay tuned. Welcome back to Hard Questions. Gentlemen, our next question is this. Dear pastors, why doesn't God work today, miracles and such, as he did in biblical times? Well, you know, I, I think that, you know, when you look at, and I'm going to start in the New Testament, mm -hmm. you know, I think a lot of miracles were done to authenticate the messenger. Right, that's right. You know, right. and if you go back to the Old Testament, you had all these prophets. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when they did miracles, you know, that kind of authenticated, man, that, sure. you know, they really have mm -hmm. the touch of God on their life. So I think that, and, and today, you know, we have God's word and, and, and that's a miracle within itself. It sure now, is. that's not to say that God is not doing, I believe that he's doing miracles Amen. a day. You know, there's no Amen. question about Amen. that. But I think that's why we see more miracles in the Bible than uh, we do today. Yeah, I, I agree with you. But I would say, like, with this question, uh, somebody would need to talk to my kids pastor at our church and ask her if she thinks that miracles still happen today since she had been diagnosed with Crohn's uh, and has been healed mm -hmm. and doesn't have Crohn's. So I would say, God, still, I agree with you. God still does. Is it at the same level that we have seen? Not in my personal experience, right. but I'm not going to limit God for what That's he right. can do, when That's he right. does it, how he does it, and with whom he does it. But he, because Hebrews 13, 8 says that he is still the same yesterday, yesterday today, today, and forever. And the perfection, okay, is, is not the canonization of scripture that now limits the things of the Holy Spirit. But when he returns and there will be no need for healing when we will all be healed. So he still does what he can do. And, and is Dave Reaver hearing out of an ear that was blown out? years ago in Vietnam, the Vietnam vet that had that hand grenade. Uh, and is he seeing through an eye that, that they say he shouldn't be seeing through? That's right. And uh, isn't this not correct? Oh, that's absolutely the case. So, so the thing is, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be ignorant or I'm not trying to come against you. God still does miracles today. I believe it. Uh, and, he and, surely does. I, I don't know that we're as quick to acknowledge that. You I, know, I I, you. I've, I've often problem. heard people I say... I have a church full of people that have been healed of cancer. Absolutely. And the doctors can't even explain absolutely. it. Absolutely. So please don't come and tell me that, that, that there's been a sensation of miracles. I don't believe it. I don't buy we it. Have been it makes so, me angry. We have been so <laughs> to the minute... That, and and I, I honestly, I would encourage you I, and, and, yeah. and encourage us to, to have a prayer journal because yes, God Tom. answers yes. our prayers. And, and, and we know this to be true, but sometimes it, it might be a few days later, it might be a few weeks right. later, it might be a few months later. And then all of a sudden it dawns on you, wait a second, I, I was really praying hard about that a month ago. And God, you gave me that. Yeah. You blessed me with that. You know me better than I understand myself. And then what's going so on you better believe that he's still doing yeah. miracles. And what's going on in Africa right now, even dead coming back to life, I'm sorry. I no, believe, no, I believe it. I, I think a lot of it, maybe this person is also asking a question about the type of miracles like parting the Red Sea, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. the right. axe head right. that floated, right. okay. uh, certain things on that. Why doesn't That's God still that? How come he's not, um, you know, how come it's not raining hail in Egypt and nothing mm -hmm. there in Goshen, you know, those type of things. And right. one of the things I think Jesus came on the scene and he changed the game. 
because there was something that after Jesus died that came into play that they didn't have in the Old Testament. They didn't have the Holy Spirit there to convince of sin, to convict of righteousness. They didn't have that in the Old Testament. So more signs were used for to authenticate the messenger, to That's authenticate right. God, because we didn't have the Holy Spirit living in our hearts. So right. Jesus shows up on the scene and says, there will be no more signs. Because if the Holy Spirit in your heart can't pull you to the Father, what signs and wonders aren't going to get you there. Yeah, the greatest on. thing that we have is the Holy Spirit now convicting the heart yeah. and doing a work in man's yeah. heart. If that doesn't get you, I mean, those outer signs are great. Yeah. I, now, once again, I'm not talking about miracles like you have said. I'm in total sure, agreement right, with sure, that. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about those other things. There he said, well, show us a sign. Jesus said, listen, the Holy Spirit is now here. And he is there in yeah. your heart speaking right. loudly. Yeah. And if he can't pull you, none of those signs yeah. are going to make a difference. Yeah. So I think those, the cessations of, of those type of things, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm more admit, are, are more in, inclined to believe that than the miracles. I still believe he heals, delivers, right. resurrects He's, the yeah, dead, yeah, all yeah. those things. And, so. I, and, I, and I think that that's at the heart of the question. The heart of the question is how come we don't see yeah. as much today? You know, again, God is doing great things Without a doubt. and he, he's doing it. But, you know, back then, you know, I think there was a genuine need to authenticate yeah. that yeah, message. Exactly. And, and do, do we, we do? expect to see today like we used to back then? We yeah. don't expect to see because we have technology. We have the American dream. We have all yeah. of the things that we have. I don't need all of this healing independence. When you get in some of these third world countries like you're talking yeah, about, Cuba, one of the reasons Mexico. why yeah. they, yeah. Uh, I think, see at a level that we don't is because they have no other recourse yeah, but to right. believe and depend <laughs> upon the name of Jesus. Yeah. But what, what do we do with the scripture that it talks about the supernatural becoming natural every day in your life? Is it scriptural? The supernatural becomes natural every day in your where, life. Where is that? Let me find it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead, go ahead, keep going. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but it is, yeah. it, it is. And, and, and I think that all of us would attest to the fact, and, and you would too, mm -hmm. that God is still doing miracles. Amen. I just don't know that we acknowledge them right. yeah. like we should. You know, and, yeah. and, and that's something we, we need to have praise on our lips. Uh, God inhabits the praises Super and thanksgiving of his people. Amen. Okay, Amen. let's go to the next question. And this, is, this was kind of an interesting question. It says, dear pastors, is it right for a missionary to lie or to do something illegal to further the gospel? Hmm. Well, I, I know the first illustrations that come up when I deal, because I get this question all the time when I'm teaching Bible <laughs> study, right. you know, is, is the midwives you know, in, right. in, in Pharaoh's day uh -huh. and then uh -huh. Rahab, you know, and, right. and how that she lied to protect the spies. So, you know, some people see a correlation between sure. the two. Uh, I would say this now, again, I don't know how the other brothers are going to uh, pan out on <laughs> this, but I, I would say it's always right to do right. Yes. So I, I think yes. that, you know, if you got to lie uh, or do something illegal, you know, right. ethically, I, you know, yeah. I think it depends on what it is too. If they say, like Peter, I think it was Peter, when they said, yeah. don't preach the gospel yeah. anymore. Yeah. And he but said, is it right for us to obey God or to obey you? So I think it depends on the motive as well. I agree. Yeah. I mean, it, we can pick apart. You yeah, know, the motive and all those things. But than lying. Yeah, lying. You know, lying is like right out, you know, do right, not right, right, bear right. false witness. Yeah. So if you ask me a question, now that, again, I'm not talking about white lies because you can color anything you want to and if it's wrong, it's wrong. But I think there is a difference and, and you, right. can, you can't take this to a place I'm not intending it uh, between deception and discretion. Okay, you can ask me a question because I've been in different countries and I've been asked questions and I will not lie, but I will give an answer that might be void of all the details, but I will give an answer that sure, is that. true yeah. uh, so as not to put a, a, an unnecessary light on a situation, but I did not lie. And I didn't just give a technical truth. Right. I gave a truth without giving every detail well, to what was going wouldn't, on. Wouldn't you agree that that's wisdom? You know, what, what you did was wisdom. It was yeah. not the right. intention to deceive. Right. I was not trying to bear a false witness against something. Right. It was not a lie against the truth. It was truth. Right. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. not the full right. detail. Right. So, I mean, you have to, wisdom, you know, when you're yeah. put in those situations, you know, you, you have to be truthful uh, and, and wisdom uh, gives you the uh, ability to be able to answer. Yeah. What Rahab that, did, that. I believe, was wrong. Now, here's the great thing about it. God can use wrong exactly. and turn things around to right. But yeah. it does not condone what right. was done. Right. It of, just says God is bigger than that. Right, because the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, God could have preserved them, you know, without her lying. Any way you know? he wanted so, to. Uh, 
That, that's a real good point. And I, and I think it's so important that we understand uh, Micah, the prophet Micah. And, and this is so very powerful. He says, what does God require of us? You know, is it a thousand rams? Is it, you know, rivers of sacrificial oil? Is it precious metals? No. He wants us to live with integrity, to treat others with kindness, right. and to walk humbly with our God. Yeah. And Micah you know six, what? Eight. To me, that's the hoop that I see life through, that I, that I pass everything through, every question mm -hmm. through. Am I living with integrity? integrity? Am mm -hmm. I treating others with kindness? Mm -hmm. Am I walking humbly with God? Because testimony is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And I think we, in understanding this question, to advance the gospel, right. God doesn't need us to advance the gospel. Right, right. <laughs> let me go back, he let needs me, us to live with integrity. Yeah. Yeah. Let me go back to scripture you asked me earlier. And, and that, would, that would be a, out of uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 12. Truly the signs of an apostle were accomplished among you with all perseverance and signs, wonders, and mighty deeds. Mm. So, so going back to where about the supernatural becoming natural. Right. And, and again, um, I think it's so important that we realize that, that God wants us to be living in relationship with him. That's right. That at all times that, radically that we dependent. Mm -hmm. radical, radically oh, dependent. Yeah. Totally dependent. And if it means telling the truth and it's going to hurt you, let's tell the truth. And let's believe God. If, I mean, if you look at, you know, like guys like Richard Wormbrandt, you know, who was tortured, you know, you look at Christians all over the world Holly that are being, that are being persecuted and they, you know, they, they could have lied, you know, yeah, and, and, and got out of things. Right. You but, bet. you know, they, they told the truth and they stuck by their guns and they were persecuted. And you have to look at that yeah. and say, you know, God was working in, in some kind of way, you know, that because yeah. they told the truth. Now they could have lied and, 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 and saved their skin, but they didn't. And God, God used that. I mean, look, look at uh, uh, Torture for Christ, that book. Mm. And, you know, you look at the, the voices of the martyrs. Right. You know, all that came out of the fact that you know, here was somebody that was persecuted. And we have a Bible today because they were willing not to give up the truth. I'm sorry. No, I'm good. Go ahead. That's it. No, that's it. Uh, you, you guys are, are saying it all. Praise God. Praise God. Living with integrity, treating others with kindness, and walking humbly with our God. What, what a challenge it is for us. We want you to stay tuned because we have more of this Hard Questions program. Welcome back to Hard Questions. In our last segment, we, we just wanted to go one step further. Is it right to lie to advance the gospel? Well, you Check. know, a lot of times people will think, you know, well, if I can cheat on my taxes or mm. I don't have to report certain yeah. things, I'm a yeah. pastor, let me lie about this because I'll get extra money to be able to further yeah. the gospel. <laughs> well, you know, I think those areas there are things that God would not require, that would not be okay with. And That's I think right. it's something that we need to make sure that we uh, point that out because even though we mentioned some of the other things about yeah. lying about our faith or things like that, yeah. but what about some of the things we could do underhandedly that yeah. would actually, in essence, take the church further, sure. but the reality is the ends won't justify the means. Yeah, and yeah. I think it comes down to this question question that I have to ask myself before I give an answer. Do I trust God? Yeah, and will my answer reflect that I trust him? Amen. Praise God. Well, we always like to end the program with a scripture. So today we go to 2 Corinthians where Paul wrote to the church there and he says, Now may he who supplies the seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. And that's from 2 Corinthians 9.10. Praise be to God. And mm -hmm. may we be of an attitude of giving. A generous man will prosper. He yeah. who refreshes others will himself Amen. be refreshed. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, just always a delight to be on this program with you and always a delight to have you with us on this program. We had some uh, good questions today. Yeah, we did. Yeah, very good. Yeah. <laughs> good questions. We had some good answers. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Good questions, great answers. Well, we just want you to know, and, and the, the purpose of this program is that you know that God loves you and that God has sent his son to pay a price that we could never pay and give us a freedom that we could never earn. Praise be to God. We'll see you next time on Hard Questions.